Brian Dutch is the head coach at Seneca State. He joins us on Extra 1360. Dutch, thank you very much. Happy New Year. It's Darren. How are you? Thanks for having me, Darren. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing better than I was three days ago. <laughs> I didn't sleep so good <laughs> after the loss. You know, obviously, you know, having the lead we had. And uh, uh, more importantly was losing it, a uh, seven-point lead in the last minute. You know, leads come and go. I watched last night where West Virginia came from 19 down in the second half to beat Oklahoma State. So we all know it's a game of runs, but you got to protect that lead when you have that kind of lead with a minute to go. And we didn't make any plays down the stretch. So I was a little on edge leading into the second game. And we came out and we did what I thought we'd do. We played extremely hard, uh, very inspired, and kind of got back on the winning ways. Yeah, the game has changed a little bit since the mid-'80s when there was no shot clock. You can't do like what Villanova did to Georgetown in the championship game and just keep the ball and shoot the ball seven, eight times. you you got to take shots here. So, you know, that's the way the sport goes. How concerned were you, Dutch, last night when you had a 26-point lead in the first half? Well, this is, a, this is a little bit of a deja vu moment. You're sitting there going, wow, we're up 26 again. And so let's make sure we don't give them that little mini run at the end of the first half where they get some confidence going. And so we didn't do that. We maintained a nice halftime lead. And to their credit, they're a very good team. They did make a run in the second half. But, you know, never where it got really uncomfortable. You know, Jordan was hot. He kept answering uh, every basket they made with a three. Gomez hit a big three. And we kind of just held the lead to where it was. Brian Dutcher joining us on Extra 1360. You mentioned Saturday night you had trouble sleeping. I read some of the quotes today, whether it was Matt Mitchell or others. You know, responding, that game has to be put in the rearview mirror as soon as possible so that you can focus on the next one, which is upcoming, which is against that same good team in Colorado State that we just started the conversation with. But how does a head coach in that situation manage it? And do you just say, hey, listen, guys, that Matt Mitchell sort of indicated that the players took it upon themselves to have a conversation. I, I just wonder, you, know, you don't have a ton of time here to figure out what your approach is going to be immediately following that game. So, so how did you, how did you work it? How did you, how did you know what to do? You know, after the game, I, I deliver the message. I always deliver after a win or a loss. Hey, we got to just get ready for the next one. Put this in the rear view mirror, you know, put our disappointment behind us. And I learned it a long time ago from coach Fisher. Don't let one loss lead to two. So if I'm in there, screaming, overreacting to every little thing, and I get them just down in the dumps further than they are, then it's hard to get them back up. So it's basketball. We're going to lose games even when we play well. You know, we didn't close the game. So opportunity lost. Let's just get ready for the next one because we can't do anything about the one that just happened. So I try to stay level-headed even though when I go home, I'm pretty devastated by a loss like that, but I don't bring it back to the team when I come. I'm, I'm positive. I'm I'm trying to move us forward as quickly as they can. And I'm, I'm only human like anybody else. Yeah, the losses hurt. But I can't bring it back to work the next day. I've got I've to set the tone, and I, I want a tone of uh, let's move beyond it. Let's get ready for the next one. Yep, absolutely. And I think everybody around these parts, Dutch, you know, they, they have gotten used to that. Even the announcers on Fox Sports 1 were saying that last night as well. They were talking about how positive you were interacting with them given the circumstances of Saturday night, and, you know, last night was a totally different game. I don't know. Does it help? Does it not help? Doesn't it matter at all? Does it matter a little bit? Having to face the same team just a couple of days, whether you win or whether you lose in baseball, right, we're always talking about double headers and you, you want to take two out of three, etc. because there's some familiarity. And now that, that you're, you've seen this here, you've experienced this for the first time, playing back-to-back, it just, it's weird. It's, it's just weird to see the same team in the same gym just a handful of days apart. How do you coach uh, in those circumstances? You know, I thought it was a good thing for us. I think we're always well prepared. I've got a great uh, staff. My assistant coaches get the team ready to play with a game plan. And even though we lost the first game, I thought our game plan was spot on. And I told the team that. I said, we're going to change a few things early in the game because they've been working a day or two on what we did. We were good at it. So we tweaked just enough to give them a different look at the start. And then we weren't afraid to go back to our original game plan, which I thought was pretty effective other than the fact we didn't close the game out. And and I guess that's something that we'll see a little bit more of, right? Sometimes people always knock the phrase that you change just for the sake of change. But I would think now, as you get set to see Nevada, if you win this first game by 30, there still has to be certain things that you're going to tweak 
just a little bit between games in one and two, just because Dutch, you sort of have to, right? Given what it was that you just said. I think at the start of the game, it's important because if, if you do one thing defensively and you do it all game, they're going to spend a day and a half getting ready for that thing and say, here's how we're going to counter act it. So maybe the first five minute segment, you don't do that thing. And then most kids, their memories are really short. So all the work they've done to make a change in their offense, that first five minutes, they'll have forgotten that. And you can go back to the original plan if you thought it was effective. So you try to not, all the counters they've got in for the first five minutes of the game, you kind of negate those by switching up just enough where what they thought they were going to see, they don't. Brian Dutcher joining us on Extra 1360. Jordan Shackle last night, uh, and I often reference this on this show. I remember it last year presenting you a list of players who you would choose to win a three-point shooting contest. I didn't present Shackle, and you said I would take Shackle. And certainly I thought about that a little bit last night, watching his performance. Eight for 11 from beyond the arc, 28 points. The Colorado State coach referenced it and said, hey, listen, every time we felt like we were getting closer, like maybe you know, we were going to get back into this the same way we did on Saturday night, it was Shackle or you know somebody else, but mostly Shackle. A night like that, um, obviously, I, I don't know that you can predict such a thing, but what's it like being there amongst your coaches? Uh, every time the ball goes up, I'm guessing that you guys all think it's going to go in. Every time he shoots it, I think it's going in. So, and that's what you have to have. You have to have confidence in the shot. And even when you miss a couple, you can still make the game winner. And so Jordan's got great confidence in his game. And so do his teammates. And we shoot the ball. I mean, we went back to back games with 14 threes. That's a lot of threes. Gomez, a shackle, Matt Mitchell hit him. Obviously, Adam Seiko didn't make one yesterday, but the first game he was four for six. So we shoot the ball at a high level. And you're good with that. This is this is the way you want the offense to look when it is. Make or miss, this is the way you want the offense to look. You know, you mentioned 14, but 27, 30, upwards of 33-point shots. You, you, you like the way this looks? It's all what the defense gives you, you know. Some games, uh, they're going to stay extended defensively to take that three away, and then we got to score going to the basket. We have to throw it inside and score inside because they're just not going to give us a three. So sometimes the defense dictates what you do. So Colorado State, we know they like to shrink on a post touch. They double the post. So we threw it in with the intention of throwing it back out to get three-point shots. So the defense dictates a lot what you do. You're starting five last night. Menza, Mitchell, Pulliam, Shackle, uh, Shackle Seiko. This is, do you predict that this is your, your starting five? Is, is this, did you like enough to – to want to see it again coming up later on this week? I think it makes us dangerous offensively. Uh, AG was still under the weather, and I'm not sure he's feeling 100% yet. So I would say probably leading into uh, Nevada that Adam will probably maintain that spot. But if AG gets feeling good and healthy, we'll have to look at it, getting him back in that lineup. Dutch, tell us a little bit about Nevada since you're going to see him here a couple times uh, between now and the end of the week. Well, obviously, Steve Alford at the helm. You know, he replaced Musselman a year ago, did a good job. Uh, he's won a lot of games in this conference from his years at New Mexico. Uh, Noodles Neal, who took over from at New Mexico and, and didn't make it there, is back as an assistant at Nevada. So you're talking about two guys that are very familiar with the Mountain West, with San Diego State. So they all have a solid game plan. They're very good coaches, and they've got a new, a new cast of characters, but they've got really good guard play. Same old Steve Alford as we got to know him when he was at New Mexico, a little bit through UCLA, but we didn't really see that up close and personal here. Yeah, yeah, I like Steve. Steve's a very good coach. He, uh, he's always got good guards, and he's got a guard that Aztec fans will probably remember, and maybe not, uh, Desmond Cambridge. When Brown beat us in here after Christmas a couple of years ago, uh, he was on that team. He had like 24, 26 points against us. So now he's on Nevada. He sat a year as a transfer. So we're concerned about him. He already, he already likes VA Hots. He got a win in here, and he feels good in this building. So we're going to have to pay extra uh, attention to him come Thursday night. Marty had a, a question from earlier in the show, and I do want to make sure that I properly credit Marty Caswell, who asked this question, Dutch, in the segment just before you came on. She wanted to know uh, whether your wife, Mrs. Dutch, or Jan Dutcher, was she watching San Diego State basketball last night, or was she watching The Bachelor? Oh, she watches San Diego State basketball. Now, she may have DVR'd The Bachelor, but uh, we li 
at that point, if she tries to turn the bachelor on, I'm on the downstairs TV and she's on the upstairs TV. Oh, okay. So you don't, you don't take that opportunity for some quality time with Mrs. Dutcher. Well, if you consider watching the bachelor quality time, then no, I don't spend quality (laughs) time. with Mrs. Dutcher. I do not actually. And I really, I sort of hate myself for having watched it last night as I was doing some quality time myself. Yeah. I did. I don't. I don't watch the show. Uh, Jan likes it, but I don't watch the show. <laughs> what if you were involved in some sort of? I don't know. You know, just just for uh, not for any money or anything, because we know that that's not what college coaches are allowed to do. But if you were involved in some sort of friendly wager, some sort of friendly pool, would you be interested in the show? You think? No, no. Oh, I think okay. I maybe saw. Uh, there's been a thousand seasons. And I just thought, what an upsetting show, seeing all these disappointed people every episode, <laughs> all these disappointed people and over ridiculous things. And so I just I have no tolerance for that. I agree with you. Life is hard enough. Who needs to make life even even harder watching a program like this? Yeah, everybody cries every episode when I watch that one. And I was like, I'm off this. I, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I agree with you. I, however, though, I got roped back into it. Well, hey, listen, the boy band, the coaching staff, you guys look good last night. It always it looks better in, in victory than, than in defeat. 78-65 last night against Colorado State at home. Uh, terrific shooting performance, uh, obviously, with Nevada coming in here. No time to, to rest up and take a victory lap, Dutch. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. We uh, always enjoy our conversations. We'll talk again soon. Thanks for having me, Darren.